Hey, good morning from Dallas, Fort Worth International Airport. We're traveling through here today to get to Steamboat Springs, Colorado for the daily inspiring community event that today will be ice fishing, which is probably a pretty good idea in terms of a solitary activity to do because I've been up since 3.30 this morning and I've not gotten a shower. So what else do you want to do when you don't have a shower? You don't want to be around any other people, but here we go. We're going to go find some community and see if there are actually people fishing together or if they're all spread out on the ice not talking to one another. I'm absolutely curious about this. Supposedly there's about 60 people there that will be present when we get there. We're going to go find some ice fishing and see if there's anybody still here from today's ice fishing tournament. My plane got in a little late, so this is kind of what happens when you're on the tail end of a community event. I wish I was here at 8am, but unfortunately I just found out about it this morning. So, we got the uh, the Tahoe here. We kick this baby into four wheel drive. Let's drive down and check it out. See what's down here. I haven't even driven off road here. I'm in a four wheel drive vehicle, um, yet somehow I'm stuck. So let's see what we got going on here. Wow. So uh, yeah, that's uh, this is definitely um, an unexpected angle for a community event. Is before you you know can get into the event that you get stuck in your truck, which has four wheel drive. Apparently that's still a possibility in win winter weather here. I'm not expecting that at all. Um, hey, I'm warm. I got a full tank of gas, so we can keep driving back and forth all day long and try and get out of this thing. Uh, let's see, the time is now, uh, what do we got here? It's currently 2.54 p.m. So I'm gonna keep going back and forth in this thing for another five or 10 minutes and we'll see how we can do. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to start digging with some tools in here. And uh, I don't even know if I got that. I might have like a little ice scraper or something. This will be interesting. <laughs> I'm stuck in a giant SUV and I can't seem to get out of the snow. Oh man, here we go. Beautiful. Oh yeah! Woo! How can you have a vehicle that weighs several thousand pounds and you get stuck? But hey, this is good news because now we got a snowmobiler so I can come and ask him for some help. That's awesome. I'm out here filming for an event that happened earlier for ice fishing. Were you guys around for that? Yeah, yeah. Right on. I'm, uh, I'm traveling through the US doing something called Agile Party. It's like teaching people how to do community events. And my flight was late, so I missed the whole event this morning. I just got here, and you guys are like my only people to interview now. If you're willing to do it, I'd love to talk to you about the event. Yeah. Right on, thanks. All right, I'm out here with Josh. He is the last remaining survivor of the ice fishing tournament this morning. How many people were here earlier at 8 a.m.? I think there was like 120. Oh man, that's huge. Well, I'm glad you guys are still out here. Big turnout. The biggest total is what wins. Yep, the... two biggest fish. You can win or two, so. They even had what they have, the smallest fish, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so even the loser yeah. gets paid, you know? <laughs> it's good times, man. That's pretty awesome. I think the purse was like 1100 1200 bucks. That's pretty good. Yeah. And what is ice fishing like? Is this sort of a community event where people will come out and they'll just do their own thing? Or do people get together in like a little hut of four and they fish the ice? How does this work? You know, there's people that do it uh, individual. And there's, uh, how many people do we have with us? Five? Um. Six? Get all the buddies together and hang out and try to catch some fish. Right on. It's a good time. Very cool. And can you kind of predict where the fish will go? Do you know it from fishing it over mm -hmm. the years? We got the honey holes, huh? We were at the honey hole today. Just kind of bounce around. If they're not uh, biting, you go to another spot. And what do, what do people do when they're out here? They're just drinking uh, coffee and hanging out and uh, fishing? A little coffee in the morning, switches to whiskey yeah. and a couple beers and... You gotta uh, get lubed up for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, just get all your good buddies together and rip lip, huh? Yeah. So if somebody was new to this, being that it's kind of a community event, it's advertised, whatever, would they be well received by this community? Is it oh, pretty yeah. open to oh, new yeah. people? You know, we just got back from Minnesota and everybody was cool with us. Right on. Yeah, okay. people uh, invite you in for coffee or, you know, it's pretty cool. What is a fisherman like that comes out here? What's the type of person that likes to come to these events? Mountain people. People that uh, are okay with the cold, man, because it, it was, what, 20, 20 below this morning? Yeah. yeah wow, 20 below. Yeah, yeah, it is freezing. Yeah, it's really cold. <laughs> but that's a normal day for being out here. That's a normal day, man. Right on. So we're going for a ride to check out some ice fishing. <laughs> this is my first time. I've never done anything like this. It's totally new to me. 
Nice, nice. Alright, so we're getting on. Go for a snowmobile ride to go check out Josh's fishing hole. As soon as I saw this event online, I was like, oh man, this thing looks God, awesome. Yeah. I gotta figure out what this is all about. Yeah, they do it every year, man. It's pretty fun. I'll show you. Cool. So you actually catch it out here and then you'll fillet it right on the spot. I'll clean it because I don't like messing with it at the house. Okay. I mean, it looks like salmon, you know? Oh, beautiful. And that's trout? Yeah, it's all trout. Wonderful. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Tasty, man. Right I'll give you a good piece. Yeah. Can you eat it raw? <laughs> this is awesome. Let's check this out. Thanks, that man. Was, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it tastes amazing. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's like fresh sushi right out of the pond. Here. Yeah, is this a pond or a lake? It gets, man. What is this? What's that? Is it a lake or a pond? This lake? big lake. Lake. Okay. Yeah, man made. State record pike came out of here. There's, there's a there's big fish, man. Got the rod case. Keep everything nice, you know? The rods are important. It's like your tools, man. Nice. We'll rig you up a job. Jack and see what happens. <laughs> you can catch a fish. I mean, you've never done it before. It wouldn't be cool just to bounce out like that, right? This is the honey. Right on. Got this pool out of here. It's been so cold, man. It uh, freezes right up. Huh. You gotta keep it clean. That's in life. Everybody likes a clean hole, right? <laughs> the ice, you got a massive trout. You know, you could lose it. A little power bait on. All right, and what is power bait? Just turbo dough. Stuff for trout. It smells gnarly. Oh, okay, yeah. They like it, though. It's smelly. Like a dead minnow or something for pike. Mm -hmm. It's more of a predator fish. Just got back from Minnesota yesterday. The uh, water's so crystal clear, man. You can be in your ice hut, look straight down the hole, you know? Yeah. It's pretty gnarly and see the fish, actually. Right on. Which is fun. And all we do is drop it to the bottom. It takes a couple minutes, usually. It's when the drinking whiskey comes into play when you're not catching, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Catch a buzz, at least. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> Catch something. Entertainment in Colorado. See that this ride the mountain, you know. And what's the hardest thing about putting a community event on out here? Getting people to show, I guess. Enticing them to do it. Yeah. I mean, usually, you know, you offer some kind of prize and most people come running, you know. But we don't even really care about the prizes. We're out here just to have a good time. And what is this thing here? This sets and holds uh, your lure on jaw it. Jawjacker. Jawjacker. Yeah, yeah, it actually sets the hook for you, so I'll show you. Oh, that's cool. Wow. It'll set it for it. I just wow. ping. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty dope. We just scored these last week. It's a good little setup. Is this a new technology or this has been around for uh, a while? Pretty new, man. Last year or two. Oh, wow. okay. And how deep is this out here? I think we're about 15. I'll get the Vexlar. It's sonar. Okay. You can kind of see if a fish comes by or, you know, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, this is super cool. So you just set it. On and the it chair. Just whips it up based yeah, on Yeah, whips own. it, man. It's pretty gnarly. Somebody was thinking, that's what you should have invented, you know? <laughs> <laughs> guy's a millionaire from fishing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, man, overnight. So I, I guess if you sit out here long enough and have enough beers, then you come up with good ideas on that. Oh, yeah. Products. Guaranteed. <laughs> for like pike, 20 pound test on it. Wow. Steel leaders, because pike have big teeth, man. You just set it up like this, put it in the hole, put the flag down. When something comes around, pops it. Wow. It almost it, it almost looks like a uh, mouse trap, but for fish. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> a fish trap. They work pretty good. They're real big back uh, Midwest. It's cold out here. I mean, we've got eight inches of ice. So this big circle here is where the hut was before? Yeah, that's where we were. We just had two holes popped in it. Cool. Rocking it right there. We'll put another one out. I gotta catch you a fish, man. All the way from Illinois, never been ice fishing, you know? <laughs> Try to be the hostess with the mostest. Okay, talk me through this one. So that's just the sonar puck. That's what's reading it. Uh -huh. You wanna set it like 
about an inch or two below the, the uh, ice there. So what you got? Oh, that's cool. Is that red line right there? Uh -huh. Is the uh, bottom? Oh, okay. That red mark right there mm -hmm. is your bait. See it moving? Uh huh. That's our bait. Right on. It works out for like density. So uh -huh. green would be like plant matter or something like that. Yeah. But the reds, the dense, that's the fish. So if a fish comes around, you'll just see a red mark coming in. It's mainly uh good for like jigging because you can see what the fish is doing and come up or come down and you know it's all about presentation of the, uh, the bait what have you it's kind of like being winter jesus man you're trying to make fish pop out of place yeah yeah totally <laughs> totally it's fun man yeah it's all about searching for them finding them we uh we my buddy won the tournament two years ago in this spot right here so there's big fish that come around. I think we'll probably call it, man. All right, cool. Very you cool. catch any fish when you're over there? No, we tried. Oh, <laughs> you tried? We did try, yeah. It was pretty cool. No nibbles? No nibbles. Uh -huh. I'm here with Dave and Sandra. And they are right at the tail end of the fishing tournament. They're uh, in this little ice hut. And it's win it. And it's a win it. <laughs> Have you guys got anything yet? No. Not yet. We were at the hot springs last night until midnight. Oh, so. right on. That place is great. Yeah. That place is great. So cool. Even yeah. at 15 below, it wasn't bad. And we proceeded just to stay for hours. It's yeah. It's a nice, nice bright moon out last night. 15 degrees below zero. <laughs> <laughs> Actually today, I wanted to come through this morning, but I was flying, yeah, flew in. Yeah, then rented the truck from Budget, and it actually got stuck up on the top of the hill here for a bit before you guys rolled in. It didn't get stuck, you got it stuck. Yeah, I got it stuck. <laughs> I totally got it stuck. And it wasn't. It was right at the end of that dock entrance, right there. I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal. Oh, you're about to have a community event right here, so I'm about to land a whopper. Yeah. Come yeah. on, fishy. <laughs> 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 it's gonna be like two days in advance. Right now. That's right. Yeah. You've been waiting long enough. It might Come as well on, bite. Yeah. I'll be happier for you if you get a fish, because I didn't catch one. Dude, that's for damn sure. <laughs> I think ice fishing is a lot of sitting and a little bit of catching. Kind of see the, the lure bouncing around probably down in the hole. Yeah. Who normally comes out as an ice fisherman? Who's like the typical community that, that comes around and, and buys the gear and sits out here? I don't know. You gotta appreciate cold weather, obviously. Yeah, and drinking usually. Yeah. <laughs> Start with alcohol. coffee and go to whiskey, that's what Josh exactly. was saying. Exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. I like to go coffee with Bailey's, then to Budweiser, then to whiskey. Nice. All depends on your progression. The level of your disease. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's kind of an interesting hybrid, right? Because we talk about community. This is seemingly like a very individual sport, but there's a lot of people that bring their friends into their huts. So in a oh, way, yeah. it's kind of getting together with your friends. Like, this is a nice mm -hmm. two-person hut. This is a really cool setup. Yeah, in the middle, yeah. Yeah, four, eight-person ones. The two-person's like the best date, and I'm kind of crashing your date here. So <laughs> thanks for letting me in. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Back in Wisconsin, people get crazy about that stuff. They're just building their own ones with satellite TVs and everything in there. Really? Oh, oh wow. yeah. And they'll drag them in on their sleds, huh. leave them out there for the whole winter. That's awesome. People don't have the money for the ski pass. Might, you know, come on, fish. I think you the know. key to all this is foot warmers. Is foot warmers? I say, yeah. Yeah. Right on. I'm soft. <laughs> it's all about being warm. Yeah. But, I mean, you kind of got to buy all the gear and then get into it, right? Or I guess or know somebody that has... Or you show up at his house and he starts handing you stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had everything I needed. And then, anyway, I've been telling him, no, I don't think I used anything. You gave me these nice little slippers and I got my foot warmers stuck to my feet. <laughs> So the Good. foot warmers are crucial. Oh, for me, because like last time I was here, we came a couple of years ago. See, oh. they just I just put them right there. Right on. <laughs> I came. I'm oh, sorry, bud. 
I came a couple years ago and um, we were like on the lake and stuff and my whole body was like shivering and I thought I was going to tell him I needed to leave because I was so cold. And it turned out it's because my feet were so cold that they were bringing the cold water up to my heart. And so it was like I was freezing from the core. And as soon as I put those foot warmers on, it changed the whole ball game. Nice. Everything. <laughs> and this ice is thick. I was thinking like, you know, I was going to step on something and fall and through. Fall but through. Other places is thicker, I'm sure. Yeah. Could you, you could drive a car on it. I don't know about it. No, probably like not the SUV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When it gets big enough, like down on the way back to, what is it, Georgetown? Yes. My four-wheel drive would get stuck again, and I'd need a, like a tow truck <laughs> oh, that God. can pull it out of the water. <laughs> what an outstanding experience to go out and go ice fishing for the first time. It was all because of the people that were part of that community that stayed after the event was over that allowed me to come out and experience it. So thank you to them. But most importantly, I think this brings up a great lesson. You know, when your event has a peak experience that's planned, which was that tournament that they did at the beginning of the day, what does it mean when someone comes a little bit later? There was a couple of people that I met towards the end that they'd been out late the night before, they didn't want to get up early, but they still wanted to go ice fishing, and so they did. So when you think about your event and you look at the peak experience that you're creating, what else does it mean for people that show up a little bit late? Is there still value in, in showing up? Is there still something for them to do? And will there still be a peak experience for them? For me, there certainly was. It was a great experience. I learned a lot about ice fishing since I'd never done that before. All you need is some warm clothes and a good mindset to go out there on the ice with somebody who knows what they're doing if you don't have any experience. But I also got to try some sashimi of, uh, of trout for the first time from, you know, pulled right out of the ice. That's pretty cool. Good experience. Definitely family friendly. You can take kids out there. They've got these huts where you can stay warm. But most of all, I think that it really changed my mind about, you know, can you build a community around a sport that's pretty solitary? And the answer is absolutely yes. There's definitely people out there that get along, that look after each other. They just make sure they're out there to have a good time. And, you know, when you're sitting around waiting for a fish to set on your line, there's a lot to talk about. And it's a great source and a great place to have really cool, engaging conversations with some wonderful people. So if you ever get a chance to check out ice fishing, please do. See you next time here on The Dice, the daily inspiring community event. Thanks for watching.